Hello and welcome back to Retro Room. Today we have another Q&A video that will focus mainly on questions I've received about Michael Alec. Let's get started. The first question is from Eric Shippey who asked, did Michael Alec live there at the Chelsea Hotel? I don't think that's where he c***ed Angel. Thanks for the question, Eric. Michael Alec did live at the Chelsea Hotel, but that is not where Angel was that took place at 560 West 43rd Street in apartment 3K, the apartment that was shared with Robert Fries Riggs. After the <laughs> Alec fled New York with fellow club kid Gitsy. Several months later, however, he returned and moved in with Brooke Humphreys into the Chelsea Hotel, where they together planned his attempted comeback with the Honey Trap Party. The next question is from Surfer Girl, who writes, why didn't he move in with his mom? Last I knew of, she was still alive. Thanks, Surfer Girl. One of the conditions when Michael Alec was paroled was that he could not leave New York City. Even if he wanted to live with his mother in Indiana, he would not have been able to reside there. In order to leave New York, Alec had to receive special permission from his parole officer, and even then, he would only be able to leave for one week at a time. Alec also had to abide by an 8 p.m. curfew and undergo and anger management counseling, as well as job readiness training. Alec remained on parole until the end of 2016. The third question is from username who writes, does anyone know if there was ever a funeral for Alec? Reports after he passed said there was a battle over his ashes between his mother and his friends. Thank you for the question, username. Yes, there was a battle between Michael's mother and the club kids over Michael's ashes, which was ultimately resolved. Michael's mother did keep the ashes, and although there wasn't a funeral, the club kids did have a final farewell for Michael Alec. Page Six reported that Screamin' Rachel and Jason Chaos paid respects to Michael Alec by hosting a, quote, outlaw party in Coney Island, which was a nod to Michael's illegal bashes in the 1980s. An excerpt from the article said, quote, We said our prayers to say goodbye, everybody had a toast, and then Hurricane Henry came rolling in. There was something about it with all those dark clouds. It felt like it was taking him away and setting him free, Kane told Page Six. It was the first outlaw party that never got busted by the police, but sure got busted by the hurricane. So the next question is from Doc, who wrote, Was it always the intention that the shockumentary sequel would not be released until after his passing? It's pretty horrible either way, because he would not be around to comment on the movie or what kind of edit they would have given him in the movie. Thank you for the question, Doc. According to what Michael Alec has said on episodes of The Pew, the shockumentary sequel and Glory Days, Life and Times of Michael Alec were two documentaries that were being filmed at the same time by two different production companies. This was during Michael Alec's parole from prison in 2014. When the distributor who was paying World of Wonder to make the shockumentary sequel found out that there was an identical documentary being made at the same time, they confronted World of Wonder asking why they were paying for a documentary that was already being made. World of Wonder then shelved the shockumentary sequel, and although they continued to film footage for it, it was decided, according to Michael Alec, St. James told him, that the shockumentary sequel would not be released until after the passing of either Alec himself or DJ Kiyoki. And our last question for the day is from Craig G who writes, I still watch Christina regularly after years. So strange and captivating. I wish there was enough info for a full film about Christina. What were the questions Michael Alec wouldn't answer? Thank you for the question, Craig G. So this question is referring to something I said in a previous video about how I found Michael Alec to be very forthcoming, except for one topic. That topic, coincidentally, was Christina. I asked Michael Alec multiple questions 
about not only the events leading up to her passing, but more specifically events and questions regarding her 1987 birthday. It took place at the tunnel and Michael Alec was there working as a busboy. And the whole debacle was captured on video by videographer Nelson Sullivan. I will put a link to his video uploaded by 5 Ninth Avenue Project in the description below. And two of the main questions that he never answered were one, was this an intentional plan to provoke and or humiliate Christina? And two, what happened to Christina's tape? We will definitely be taking another deep dive into Christina's 87th birthday at some point in the future. But uh, yeah, those were the big questions that Michael Alec refused to answer. So that's the last question. Thank you guys for submitting the questions. You can let me know if you have any other questions that you would like me to try and answer in the comment section below. If you could, please do me a huge favor and subscribe to this channel if you are not already. It will be greatly appreciated. And click the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. That's all for today, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.